Okay, today we're going to take a look at um, a brief introduction to limits. Uh, and it really is going to be just a really, really brief introduction to limits, something that you might do on the very first day in a pre-calc class or early, early on in a calculus class. Um, I am going to look at three different approaches, though, in this video for working with our limits. We can take a graphical approach where we have a graph to look at and we can find the limit. We're going to look um, at a numerical approach that would be using an XY table and kind of taking a look at the values in that XY table and seeing what the numbers are doing. And then we're going to be taking an analytical approach, all right, uh, more like just algebraically working it out. Okay. Uh, now, before we get started, there is some notation that you need to um, know with your limits. Okay. Um, this is read the limit as x approaches 4 from the left of f of x. So that would be we were trying to find the limit of our function as x approaches 4 from the left. Okay. Um, now, so what that means is it's a one-sided limit, and we are going to be checking the limit from the left. So let's put out here we're going to check all right from the left all right and if we're um, using a graphical approach it becomes very very simple because we're going to be looking from the left all right your notation here the limit as x approaches 4 from the right of f of x okay so then if we were using a graphical approach then we would be checking the limit and seeing what is happening from the right all right, and then if it does not have the little plus or minus sign there, then it's just the limit as x approaches 4 of f of x. All right, in which case, if it doesn't indicate that it is coming from the left or it's coming from the right, then that means that we would need to check both the left and the right. So we would be checking it from the left, and we would be checking it from the right. All right, and then that kind of leads down into this sentence down here for my general information. Okay, the limit from the left and the limit from the right must be equal for the limit to exist. Okay, and we will get into that when we do our examples here. All right, but if they don't indicate that they want just a one-sided limit, all right, you check from the left, you check from the right. Those two values must be equal for the limit to exist. Otherwise, the limit does not exist. All right, so if I check it from the left and I get one answer, I check it from the right and I get a different answer, then the overall limit does not exist. So you will often see a DNE, all right, which means does not exist. All right, um, now one other thing I want to add here these two top limits, the way they are written with the little plus and the minus, they are called one-sided limits. Okay, so one-sided limits. Okay, um, and then uh, my last general note down here, let's take a look at that. All right, the value of the function at C. Okay, finding the value of the function at any given value on the graph. You did that a lot in a pre-calc class. All right, you just, you know, look at the function and see what the value is at a given value. All right, that has no bearing on the value of the limit as x approaches c. So I can have one answer for the value of the function, but then at that same value, as x approaches that value, when I do the limit, the limit does not have to equal that at all. It can be totally different. Those two things are separate. And right now, that probably doesn't make a lot of sense, but it will once we start looking at some examples. All right. So for, to begin with, let's take a look at a graphical approach here. Okay, so um, lots of different ways you can do it. They can give you some random graph that's got lots of things going on, or you could, if you had the uh, fu given function, you could put it in your graphing calculator and look at it that way as well. All right, but let's say I've got some um, weird-looking function here, and the function is called f of x. All right, I want to take a look at the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x. So of this function, I want to know the limit as x approaches 0. All right, now right here, I do not have a little plus or a minus, so I am not doing a one-sided limit. But what that tells me is I have to check it from the left and I have to check it from the right and see if those two values equal. All right, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come up here to my function as x approaches 0, so I go along my x-axis. All right, my answer as the limit as x approaches 0 is going to be what value does the function, what y value does the function approach. Okay, so yes, I'm coming from the left because I'm going to go ahead and check it from the left. All right, well, I can come up here and I can look at my function and I can see what it's doing. And as it gets closer and closer to 0, the y value of the function approaches 1. 
Okay, so let's make that little note here. I am checking the limit as x approaches 0 from the left of f of x. And I said that the y value then is approaching 1. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and consider it from the right. Here's x equals 0. I'm going to come in from the right. Okay, as I come from the right, my function is approaching the y value of 4. Okay, so the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of f of x is 4. Okay, so from the left it's 1, from the right it's 4. Those two numbers do not equal, so then my overall limit as x approaches 0 of f of x does not exist. So I can do a DNE. Okay, so now I want to compare the limit of the function as x approaches 0 to just the plain old value of the function. This is just pre-calc notation f of 0. All right, what do I get when I take 0 and I plug it into the function? All right, well, when I plug 0 into the function, that's an open dot, so that's not part of my function. My closed dot right there is a 1, so f of 0 equals 1. All right, this is what I was talking about on that second note. The value of the function has no bearing on the limit as it approaches that same value that I'm trying to find. Those two answers are not the same and they have nothing to do with each other. All right, um, let's also take a look at the limit as x, is, x approaches 1 of f of x. All right, here again, I'm not indicating from the left or from the right. It just wants to know what's the limit as x approaches 1. So that means on my own, I have to know I've got to check it from the left, I've got to check it from the right. All right, so here's 1 on the x-axis, all right, and I'm going to check it from the left. I'm going to come from the left. So my function is coming in as I get really, really, really close to 1. It's approaching the y value of 1. So the limit as x approaches 1 from the left is 1. All right, now I also have to test the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of f of x. All right, so here's 1 on my x-axis. I'm going to be coming from the right. I'm going to follow my function down, and as it gets really, 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 really close to 1, the function is approaching the y value of 1. All right, in this case, my limit from the left and my limit from the right is equal. That means the overall limit as x approaches 1 of f of x on this one is 1. Okay, now again, just to compare and, and make sure that you understand the value of the function and the limit as x approaches that value has no, nothing, um, you know, no connection there whatsoever, let's do f of 1. All right, that says take 1, plug it into the function. It's not a limit, that's just straight finding the value of the function at 1. All right, well, there's 1, I would plug it into the function, I would see what my y value is, it's an open dot. All right, so the function is undefined at 1 because of that open dot right there. And again, you can see these two things have no bearing. The function is undefined at 1. However, the limit as x approaches 1 does have a value, and it equals 1. All right, now let's uh, also take a look at some one-sided limits. Let's take a look at the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the left of f of x. All right, here's negative 2 on my x-axis. I want to approach it, and I want to come from the left. As I come from the left, and the function itself gets really, really, really close to negative 2, the y value that that is attaining is negative infinity. Okay. Um, taking a look at the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the right of f of x. All right, well, here's still negative 2. This time I'm coming from the right. I take a look at what that function is doing. The function is getting really, as it gets really, really, really close to the x value of negative 2. The y value it attains is positive infinity. All right, let's do one more on our graphical approach here. Let's take a look at the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x. All right, x approaches 3, so I'm looking right here on my graph. Again, I'm not indicating from the left or from the right, so that means I'm going to have to check both of them. All right, as I approach from the left, I can take a look at my function, and the y value that it is attaining is positive infinity. As I come from the right and approach 3, my function, that y value of that function is also approaching infinity, so both the left and the right equal the same thing, which is infinity. Okay, I did a lot of writing there. I did a lot of talking without writing anything down. I checked the limit as x approaches 3 from the left of f of x, and I got positive infinity. I checked the limit as x approaches 3 from the right 
of f of x. I also got infinity. All right, so then the overall limit is infinity. Okay, now, just a little note here on this. Um, I, in my classes, I really like for the students to say that's infinity. I like negative infinity. I like positive infinity because that really describes what the graph is doing. All right, however, I do know that the textbook that I teach out of, which is the Larson Calculus book, that will say that this limit does not exist. Okay, both of those answers, like on the AP Calc exam and stuff, are going to be acceptable, all right, because it's just a, a, a preference on what you choose. The reason I like for my students to say infinity is because positive infinity there, I can, they can clearly think, oh, it's going, the, the function's going upward forever, un, unbounded behavior in a positive direction. And it just better gives them an idea of what the graph is doing as opposed to saying does not exist. All right, if, if you don't believe that infinity is a number, then you, that's why you're going to say does not exist, okay, because we want the y value of that function. Okay, so just a little note. Some textbooks will choose does not exist right there. To me, those two answers are equivalent, and they are counted the same on the AP Calc exam. All right, now let's take um, just one little example for a numerical approach. Okay, from a numerical standpoint, what you're going to do, all right, you've got some function, Okay, let's say we don't know what it looks like. We don't have a graphing calculator to look easily at it. All right, so you can construct a table of values. If you do have the graphical calculator, um, sometimes it's still just looking at the picture doesn't help. You need to actually look at the table of values. Now, obviously, if you're doing it with a calculator, your table of values would be up and down. However, when I do this by hand and I make my table of values, I do it left to right because we've got to examine our limit from the left and from the right. So if you make your table, left to right, then you're checking the values on both sides and it makes sense. All right, so this right here, I'm doing the limit as x approaches 1, so it's not a one-sided limit, so I do have to check both the left and the right of x to the third minus 1 all over x minus 1. All right, so um, I'm going to do a horizontal table here. I've got my x and I've got my f of x, okay, my little xy table here. Okay, now I'm approaching 1, so I'm going to put 1 in the middle of my table because that's the limit that I'm trying to figure out. I don't know what that limit is. I need to find it out. Okay, now what you need to do is you need to pick decimals on the left-hand side of 1 that I'm getting closer and closer and closer to 1 that I'm going to use. All right, and you don't want to go really, really far away because the whole idea of the limit is we want to know what the function is doing as it gets really, really close to 1. So I want decimals really, really close to 1. All right, so I might use a 0.999. And then maybe I might use a 0.99. And then I might use a 0.9. <clears throat> and in all honesty, I don't think we need to keep going. I could do more and more and more. <clears throat> but as I get closer and closer to 1 from the left, 0 0.9, 0 0.99, 0 0.999, I'm getting closer and closer. And I'm really, really close. So those would be good x values to choose. All right, you do get to choose the values. All right, now, this way, I need it on the right-hand side of 1. I need to pick some decimals really, really, really close to 1. Okay, so I could do maybe, say, 1.001. .001. And then maybe I might want to pick 1.01. .01. And then 1.1. All right, I want to get really, really close. All right, it's going to be easier to do this um, if you do have a calculator so that you can plug these values in. You would plug 0.9 into that function, calculate it out, and see what kind of value you get. All right, you're going to get a 2.71 here. You take 0.99, plug it into the function, work it out. You're going to get a 2.97 here. Take 0.999, plug it into the function, work it out. You're going to get a point. 2.997. All right, and you could pause the video and check that out for yourself, okay, or you can trust me on that. You're going to, again, on this side, I'm going to take 1.001, .001, I'm going to plug it into that function, work it out, and I get a 3.003. You're going to take 1.01, .01, plug it into the function, work it out, you're going to get a 3.03. You're going to take 1.1, .1, plug it in, work it out, and you're going to get a 3.31. All right, once you've got your table all generated, all right, then it's just a matter of taking a look at and seeing what's happening. All right, here's one. When I'm coming from the left, what are these answers doing? Well, I'm getting 2.7, 2.97, 2.997. All right, hopefully you can clearly see that from the left, I'm approaching the value of 3. All right, so coming from the left, I'm getting a 3. All right, now if I come from the right, 3.31, 
then I get a little bit smaller, 3.03, .03, then I get a little bit smaller, 3.003. .03. Alright, and again, coming from this direction, the numbers are getting closer and closer to 3. So, the limit from the left and the limit from the right are both 3. So that means my overall limit is going to be 3. Alright, but that's how you'd go about using a numerical approach to finding a limit. Okay, last um, approach would be taking an analytical approach. Alright, and again here, this is like a very, very brief introduction. Okay, so um, this would be like on the first day, everything's going to work out nice and neat here. You're going to use algebra to calculate the limit by using what's called a direct substitution. You're going to take your value and you're going to directly substitute it in. You're going to do a little bit of um, algebra and you're going to get your answer. Alright, now, it's, every one of these are going to work out really, really nice because it is just a brief introduction. All right. Later, as you start doing more of them, you're going to try this direct substitution method. You're going to plug it in, and then you're going to get something that's not allowed. You're going to end up with maybe, say, a 0 over 0. Well, we can't divide by 0, so that's going to be an indeterminate form. All right. And this video is not going to cover how to handle those, because that would be in a later video. Okay. So for this um, analytical approach, I'm going to use direct substitution. So I'm trying to do the limit as x approaches 3 of 2x minus 5. Alright, well, I'm going to direct substitute. I'm going to take my 3, plug it in for x, and work it out and see what happens. Alright, now, as soon as I do that direct substitution, if I'm trying to show my work, alright, to begin with, I have the limit notation in front of it because I am taking the limit. As soon as you do the direct substitution, you have taken the limit. So this mathematical notation should drop off, and I should just write 2 times 3 minus 5. I've done the direct substitution. When you do the direct substitution, the limit notation, that mathematical notation, drops off. All right, and that's just a matter of working that out. 2 times 3 is 6 minus 5. That's going to give you a 1. So I can real quickly use an analytical approach and come up with this limit value being 1. All right, direct substitution method on this one. I would take that negative 8, because it says x is approaching negative 8. I'm going to do a direct substitution. When I do the direct substitution, this notation goes away, and I would just have the cube root of a negative 8. Okay, well, cube root of negative 8 is going to be a negative 2. So they work out nice and simple. All right, the function can be just about anything. This was straight algebraic. That was a cube root. This is an absolute value. I can do the exact same thing here. The limit as x approaches 7 of the absolute value of x minus 7, so I'm going to do a direct substitution. When I do that direct substitution, my limit notation goes away. 7 minus 9, absolute value. All right, go ahead and do the subtraction there inside. I get the absolute value of a negative 2, and then absolute value of negative 2 is 2. Okay, so like I said, in the very, very first lesson that you have to do an analytical approach to this, um, they're going to work out really nice and simple. You're going to be able to do a direct substitution. You'll get a nice little value. It'll be later on when you will have to take a different approach when direct substitution doesn't work. All right, so um, just a real short little video on a nice little brief introduction to limits. If you liked the video, I'd um, really like for you to hit like, share with your friends, pass the word around, and um, that helps my channel out a lot. Thanks.